Hello everyone and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video with me, Oofle Spoofle, and in today's episode of Mod Korea, we'll hopefully be pushing our space agency further than ever before with this new technology we are currently uh, unlocking in research and development. So um, as you can see we've unlocked some new rocketry technology and electronics which seems to be the theme for these R&D segments at the beginning of the video. But um, we have much more powerful rocketry now, meaning that we'll be able to have a lot more payload in low carbon orbit than before. And, um, you know, we'll be able to push it much further. So um, while we're here, we can also go ahead and pick up a couple contracts. Uh, one of them is to orbit the moon and the other one is um, part of research bodies, which just means that uh, it's. I'm going to start looking for planets, which uh, will give me some science, hopefully, in the long run. But um, as, you, as you can see, we are now constructing our first probe, and yes, we finally have the Octo Probe Core, meaning that we don't have to uh, use the QB, which has no reaction wheels. That's the main thing that I don't like about it. So uh, we no longer have to rely on RCS for all of our control needs, which is, you know, reaction wheels, at least in stock, are way better. But we can go ahead and launch our first satellite into orbit. And as you can see, we are now using Smart ASS to do our launches, just because, you know, you can be far more precise, that's the main thing. We still have to, you know, put in, like, how to do your gravity turn, but it just, it just really makes everything a bit easier. And I know that some people think that MechJeb is kind of cheating, and I, I can kind of respect why you think that, but, you know, personally, my opinion is that MechJeb is it's a great mod, and I would definitely recommend it. And uh, for, you know, for situations like this, I think it's absolutely fine to use McJeb. But uh, we can now stage away the bottom stage and get ourselves into orbit. And as you can see, we now have the procedural fairings unlocked, which are just so much better than the stock ones, in my opinion. Uh, it also means we can have fairings bigger than zero, I mean, uh, yeah, 0 0.625 meters, which is what we want. But I've just realized that I have not mentioned where this probe is actually going. So we're going to be putting this in orbit of the Mun, of course, to fulfill that contract that we just accepted. And um, it's going to be in a polar uh, orbit of the Mun, just to help, you know, make sure I have all of those biomes for my biome-specific experiments. But uh, the trick to getting into a polar orbit of the Mun is to put yourself onto a collision course like I did here, and then just do a normal or anti-normal burn uh, somewhere around halfway to, um, towards the Mun. And uh, from there, you can just raise your periapsis to, you know, whatever height I want. Um, personally, I went for 30 kilometers because I want access to both space low and space high above the Mun. But uh, we can go ahead and do our circularization burn. And uh, there was some time warping off camera just to make sure that I get all the science possible. But um, I'm not going to show that. And we can just skip ahead to the second uh, build of this episode. So as you can see, I'm going with a very different design. Um, I'm trying to base this off, you know, real life satellites in some way. And, you know, if you look at a real satellite, it kind of has this silver foil coating kind of thing. And normally that's alum aluminium, uh, which is there to protect the satellite, you know, all of its delicate internals from things like radiation and uh, maybe, I don't know, it probably wouldn't help much against space debris. But um, anyway, yeah, this does increase the part count quite a lot and it is very time consuming to build. But, you know, you end up with a satellite that, in my opinion, looks much cleaner because you don't have, you know, all those weird looking experiments on the side. And in my opinion, it does look a little bit messy. But, you know, this is much cleaner. Of course, we just have the two solar panel arrays and the um, communitron on top. So now this probe um, is going to be orbiting the sun. So we're going to have to eject this out of the carbon system entirely. And, you know, I think we did pick up the contract earlier to orbit the sun and also gather some science from there. Um, so that this probe is going to do just that. Now, um, there was a slight problem, a slight design oversight. Personally, um, you know, I just went with the Communitron 16, and well, as we're going to see, that's not quite enough to uh, actually transmit the science back because, of course, as you get further away from carbon, your signal strength is going to drop, and the Communitron 16 with the tracking station level I have isn't really going to be able to do much outside of Kerman's sphere of influence. So, yeah, spoiler alert, we did not actually complete the contract. So we might have to send up another satellite at some point. Or we could potentially upgrade the tracking station, but that does not sound like a good use of money. Uh, at least at this point in the game. 
But um, all that aside, we still did get a bit of science and funds just from the milestones. Because, um, of course, whenever you do something new, like such as going to a new um, body in the game, then you do get a science reward and a funds reward, and also a reputation reward, actually. So I'd say that this mission was still worth it. And, uh, you know, because, you know, we did spend a bit of time. Um, so that means our, um, what's it called? Our exper experiments will... um actually take less time to complete next time we send up a satellite into solar orbit. So, you know, overall, it's not that much of a disaster. Here you see I am detaching the probe from the kick stage, and, uh, yeah, as you can see, the signal strength is dropping fast, and my transmit speed is only a few bits per second, so, yeah, that's really not going to get me very far. So, yeah. Unfortunately, not the best uh, mission, but... We can pick up some new contracts, and uh, one of them is to land on the Mon, which hopefully, hopefully will be next uh, video. Um, but we also picked up some contracts to perform scans of the Mon using the ScanSat mod. And uh, I just, I just gotta say, if you haven't used ScanSat, it's such a good mod. All right, it's it's great for career. It's great for like even like sandbox. It can be quite fun just to go and map some planets or whatever. But um. So we have two contracts. Uh, one of them is to make a multi-spectral scan of the Mon, and another one is to do an altimetry scan. So we're going to have to put two instruments on board this. Um, we can we only have the low-resolution ones, but of course, yeah, that's all you really have access to in the early game like this. So um, one thing about these instruments is they take up a lot of electric charge. So um, yeah, I had to add quite a lot of solar panels. So I do end up adding two extra arrays as you can see here and then basically the entire you know cuboid cuboid uh, segment of this satellite is basically just filled with batteries um to make sure it can survive the uh, the shadow of the mun but um yeah this is a slightly larger payload than the last two launches so we are going to need a slightly larger launch vehicle and uh, if you're wondering what that bottom engine is that's actually the merlin 1a engine which is i believe the engine that was on the falcon 1 rocket um, it might, you know, it might sound like, oh, 21st century rocket tree. Um, this mod probably doesn't fit in with the tech tree. Uh, the mod, by the way, is Tundra Exploration. And I feel like, uh, these two mods weren't really meant to go together. But I, it's really not as good as you might think it is. It has a decent, um, ISP, but the thrust isn't really great. So I think it is acceptable to use it, even if it might not fit in with, uh, the tech tree that I'm using. But anyway, in just a moment here, we are going to deploy our fairing, and uh, we can go ahead and put this thing in orbit of the Mun. Now, I'm going to use the exact same trick to get this thing into a polar orbit. Um, hopefully, you can remember that from about five minutes ago when I explained it. Um, but I should mention that something slightly weird happened with this mission. And um, so, yeah, I have Kerbalism installed, right? And so one of the features of Kerbalism is engine failures. So each engine has its own set, you know, rated burn time. And once you get past that burn time, there's a very high chance of that engine failing. And um, in this case, the Ant engine on my, um, that's built into my satellite has a rated burn time of about five and a half minutes. And as you're about to see, um, I do spend a lot more than five and a half minutes burning with this engine. And spoiler alert, I do not get an engine failure. And this has actually happened to me before. Um, it was also with the ant engine, in fact, so I obviously didn't learn. But, yeah, I don't know if Kerbalism's bugged. I mean, technically, it's not like you just instantly fail as soon as you, you know, pass that burn time. Um, so, I guess I could be getting really lucky, but I'm, you know, I'm not Dream. I don't think I'm really getting that lucky, so, I don't know. If you've had a similar problem, then uh, do let me know. But, anyway, we've now done our correction burn, so we can uh, get to the Mun, and I've put my orbit at 70 kilometers, just because that's the optimal um, altitude for these ScanSat instruments. Um, I'm a bit surprised that that doesn't depend on where you are, because, you know, 70 kilometers is quite high for some moons, like, I mean, whatever, we can just do our circularization burn. And uh, I can also show off some of the ScanSat maps that I got. So, of course, we do have the biome map. We have a low-res visual map and a low-res altimetry map. So, here they are right here. Not quite complete, but it was enough to fulfill the contract. And, yeah, isn't that brilliant? So, that is going to do it for this video, guys. If you did enjoy, then please make sure to leave a like. 
subscribe, all of that good generic YouTube stuff. If you want to join my Discord, there's going to be a link in the description. So, you know, make sure to check that out or don't. You have free will. It's, it's your choice, really. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, have a great rest of your day.